Well, here's a first. A video out before the film's even left the cinema. Next, hell will be freezing over and the seas will turn to lemonade. Back when I was a smaller child and a friend first recommended the original Ratchet and Clank game to me, I wouldn't have dreamed that it'd be a property with a movie associated with it. And with the state of video game film at the time, I doubt I'd have wanted one either. In hindsight, it's kind of a no-brainer choice. Ratchet has a recognisable silhouette, making him pretty marketable. The series has always had an appealing, cartoony-looking character and location design. There's plenty of room for action, and the series has always had a sly, sarcastic sense of humour to it. Perfect candidate for a show or movie, for the less scrupulous to try and grab the rights to try and make a quick buck. My hopes were high going in, though, given that Insomniac, the creators of Ratchet and Clank, helped with many aspects of the film during production, even using a writer from past games on the project. The film is more or less a retelling of the first game. Ratchet is a mechanic on a backwater planet who dreams of becoming a galactic ranger and hero to the galaxy, alongside his personal hero, Captain Quark. One day, he finds Clank, a defective warbot built by a race called the Blarg, who's crashed in a desert and determined to deliver a warning to the rangers about the Blarg's evil plot to create a new homeworld for themselves from fragments of planets destroyed by their new machine, the Duplanetizer. Pretty standard hero's journey stuff to be sure, and, well, I think that's one of the film's greatest weaknesses. It's a story we've all seen before, and no matter how competently it's been executed, most people will be able to guess the resolution to story beats as soon as they're introduced. Having said that, I should commend the film for having prominent male and female characters without resorting to a forced love story. Another problem beyond the film's sheer predictability is its attempt to retcon the story to include Dr. Nefarious, a longtime series favourite villain, alongside Chairman Drek, the leader of the blog. Don't get me wrong, I think Armin Shimmerman and Paul Giamatti both do excellent jobs as deranged scientist and slimy corporate yuppie, respectively. But trying to shoehorn Nefarious into this story leads to some completely pointless scenes and extra unnecessary story wrinkles. It also means we don't really get a reason as to why the Blargs need a new homeworld. Sure, in the games they make it clear that they messed up their old homeworld with pollution, but they don't take the time to say that in the film. Which may just be one of the plot points that slip through the cracks as they try to make Nefarious make sense in this story. I suspect this is a symptom of uh, Batman Begins or Marvel's influence on modern cinema and the need for sequel setups, especially as they've bothered to do a mid credit sequel tease here. It's tough to really tell who the film is for as well. The cartoony art style paired with a U rating suggests it would be aimed at the young'uns, but, but so far as I could tell, most of the jokes would only really be funny to established fans of the series or otherwise giant nerds. I mean, there's a joke about the Wilhelm screen in there, for God's sake. I can't really think how the film would have benefited by being more rude or violent to give it a higher rating, but who knows. I mean, speaking as a huge fan of the game series, there are a lot of shout-outs to the games, both overt and more subtle. And while I found them more charming than cringy, I can totally see how someone uninitiated in the series might find them confusing or annoying. I mean, why bother with a gun that shoots a tornado when there are plenty more directly lethal weapons in this universe, for a less spoilery example. The animation in the film, in general, looks great. I'm not sure what it is about Ratchet's face animation I don't like, though. A lot of the time it looks like someone's trying to make a wax puppet talk. I mean, this might seem like a pretty petty complaint if I feel the animation is generally lovely, but considering how much time we spend with Ratchet and how much it stood out to me as off, I thought it was worth mentioning. Whilst I'm on the subject of Ratchet's animation, I'm also going to say it's pretty weird how much time is spent obsessing about Ratchet's tail during the movie. There are multiple sequences where Ratchet walks not quite off scene and we've just left with his tail twitching like a distressed cat and it just felt weird. Who knows, maybe it was an addition to try and amuse the aforementioned young'uns with colour and movement. But for all my whinging, Ratchet and Clank is perfectly fine as a film. In terms of films adapted from games, it's practically top tier. But then again, that's like being the best-looking Burn Ward victim. If you're a fan of the series already, you might be like me and get a kick out of all the references and the handful of jokes that land. If you're not, you might want something colourful and innocent to amuse yourself in a big air-conditioned room. And you could do a lot worse than this. Thank you so much for watching, if you've managed to get this far. I mean, this is merely my opinion, so why not say in the comments if you like or if you agree or not with me? Or if you like this video, be sure to give it a like. If you if you didn't, there's a dislike button there. 
I'm mostly doing a series on reviewing films based on video games as either direct adaptations or if they've got video games as part of their theme somehow. I also do reviews of random indie games on Steam sometimes. So yeah, if any of that interests you, you can press the subscribe button and it'll be and it'll be sent directly to your YouTube inbox. So yeah, thanks again for watching. Bye bye.